Hello. Thank you for tuning in to Sounds of Symmetry. So why Sounds of Symmetry? The motivation for sound comes from an article written by Mark Katz in 1966 titled, Can One Hear the Shape of a Drum? And the reason for this title is because if we consider bounded domains in the plane and we look at the collection of eigenvalues to the Laplace eigenvalue equation with the Dirichlet boundary condition, then physically these eigenvalues determine the frequencies at which that domain would vibrate if it were the head of a drum. And so we can colloquially say that we can hear the eigenvalues. Um, the entire collection of eigenvalues is called the spectrum. So each domain has a collection, has a spectrum. And so we can ask, well, if two domains have the same spectrum, meaning they sound exactly the same, then are they the same shape? The answer to this question is known. And if you don't know it already, then I won't spoil the fun. And I'll, I'll leave that to you to look up. So in particular, what I want to understand here is can we hear symmetry? So any quantity that's determined by the spectrum is called a spectral invariant. And Katz would say that we could hear these quantities. So Rayleigh and his contemporaries could prove that if two, um, if a rectangle and a square have the same spectrum, then in fact, the rectangle has to be a square. So we can hear the symmetry of the square if we're listening to rectangles. Faber and Cron independently in the 1920s proved a conjecture of Riley, which is that you can hear the most symmetric domain in Rn. Um, so if you're listening to domains in Rn, you can hear whether or not that domain is a ball. Polio and Sago in the 1950s proved a similar result for polygonal domains, but this only holds for triangles and quadrilaterals. Both the polio Sago and Faber Kron results were proven by symmetrization methods. And the method here is called Steiner symmetrization, and um, it stops sort of working for n greater than or equal to five. So this has remained a conjecture for nearly, well, actually exactly 70 years. Together with Jichen Lu, we've proven a collection of results showing that you can hear symmetry. Um, the first one concerns the fundamental gap of triangles. And so this is the distant difference between the first two eigenvalues normalized by the diameter squared. And it's minimized by an equilateral triangle. If a triangle collapses towards a segment, this gap actually blows up. What we've also been able to prove is that not only can you hear the symmetry of a regular n-gon if you're listening to all n-gons, there's some finite collection of eigenvalues and that's all that's needed. So you don't need to be able to hear all of them. You just need to be able to hear a finite collection and then you can tell if the n-gon is regular or not. Now conjecture, we don't know what this n is. We haven't been able to obtain an estimate. That's no problem. The spectral zeta function has been used by Osgood, Phillips, and Sarnak to prove that if you're listening to Riemannian metrics in a conformal class on surface, then you can hear the uniform metric. You can hear its symmetry. And together with Clara Aldana, we studied the determinant on rectangles. And we also showed that the determinant picks up the symmetry of a square. 
very recently, Victor Calvin proved that if one looks at triangle envelopes, uh, isosceles triangle envelopes, which is a surface obtained by gluing together two identical isosceles triangles along the edges, thereby creating a flat, smooth surface that has three conical singularities. The equilateral envelope is always a critical point for the determinant. And interestingly, sometimes it's a maximum and sometimes it's a minimum, and that depends upon the area. But it's always a critical point. So in conclusion, we're still listening. These are just a few examples among many, many more in the literature. And if I've omitted anything, it's merely due to time constraints, not due to a lack of interest. So I encourage you to seek out more results about theory and symmetry and investigate the many open problems that remain. And I wish you much luck if you set off to resolve some of these problems. Bye.